I want to invite you to open a Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you don't have a Bible with you, there are a few Bibles in front that you are free to use and open. And if you are new to the Bible, you can follow along in the bulletin. This morning, we continue our sermon series, Headspace, listening to the voice of Jesus. Because there are things that get stuck in our head. Sometimes they're positive thoughts. We tell ourselves encouraging things over and over and over again when we're facing a struggle. But there's other times where things get stuck in our heads, thoughts get stuck in our hearts that are incredibly destructive and negative, right? We, we tear ourselves down, or we listen to these lies, or we listen to the lies of Satan that tempts us and that tries to crush us. And then there's the good news of the voice of Jesus. In John chapter 10, Jesus calls us his sheep. He calls himself the good shepherd. He says, my voice. My sheep know my voice, they listen to me, and no one can ever snatch them away. So the good news of the voice of Jesus is that he loves you, he forgives you, and that he claims you as his own. And there is nobody and nothing in all creation, including ourselves, that can take us away from his love and from belonging to him. And so this morning, as we continue to listen to the voice of Jesus, listen to the voice of God over the lies of Satan and the lies that we tell ourselves, the lie that we want to address this morning is the lie that says, I'm not gifted. Or another way of saying it is, I, I don't matter or I don't have anything to offer. Right? Sometimes we tell ourselves that I'm not good enough to do something, I'm not good enough to try something, or, or no one needs my help, or no one needs me, or what I have to offer isn't that valuable. Right? And that, that's a powerful lie at work in a lot of our lives sometimes where we, we doubt ourselves. Anybody ever doubted your abilities on something? Right? Popularly nowadays it's called the imposter syndrome, right? Where, where we think like, man, everybody's going to figure out I have no idea what I'm doing. I know I'm telling you that right now, right? Like <laughs> one of these days people are going to figure out, I don't know what I'm doing. Anybody ever felt that pressure, right? Internally, right? Where like, I'm not good enough. Like I, I'm not skilled enough. I'm not gifted enough. And man, if anybody ever finds out, it's going to be bad, right? So this buy is all over our culture. It's all over our world. And oftentimes it's all over our own minds and hearts. And so this morning, as we look at God's word, we're going to see that God's word gives a very different promise and truth for us to hold on to and to believe. Anybody heard of Amazon? Yeah, Amazon Prime pretty popular. I've been seeing endless commercials about Prime Day coming up. Anybody excited for Prime Day? Eh, kind of. And then you don't feel excited and then it happens and you're on your phone and guess what? Now you're excited. You ordered a bunch of stuff. Well, one of the things that I've seen in these commercials lately, they've been driving me insane, is the idea that if you're a Prime member, you get access to all of their deals and all their savings a couple days early. Isn't that exciting for you, right? Doesn't that change your life? By the way, if you pay attention to the commercials, that's the promise of the commercial is that it'll change your life. And in fact, the whole point of this commercial that I keep seeing over and over and over again as we talk about things that get stuck in your head, it's this annoying commercial for me this past week about Amazon Prime. Nothing against them, okay, whatever. But the whole point of the commercial is that if you're a Prime member, you get to be special and stand out from everybody else because you get access to the deals a couple days early. Anybody seen this commercial yet, right? And it says you're special, like you're significant, you, you matter, right? Now here's why this is powerful marketing, because we all wanna be what? Special, we all wanna matter, right? We, we want to believe a truth about ourselves. We don't wanna believe the lie that Satan tells us that we don't matter, that we're not special, we have nothing to offer, right? And so we search for it where? Everywhere. Whether it's memberships and subscriptions or shopping, whatever it might be. Now here's the deal. I did a little Google research, so you can challenge me if you don't think it's official, okay? But currently, right? So the whole argument is you will be special. You will stand out, you will matter because you get two days early access to our discounts. In the U.S. alone, there are currently over 160 million subscribers to Amazon Prime. So, like, you're one of 160 million. Imagine if someone that you loved came up to you and said, 
you're so special. You're just like 160 other million people to me. How many of you would be like, I love you too, <laughs> right? You'd be like, someone's not getting a prime deal for me, right? Like, you're just not doing that for that, right? But here's the problem is we could look at it and be like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, all of us have heard of it, we know it. But this is the lie of the world, right? This is the lie of Satan that we, we go searching to find fulfillment in. Oh, I don't matter, but I want to. I'm not special, but I want to be special. I, I don't have anything of value, but I want to have something of value. And so what do we do? Instead of listening to the truth of God's word and the comfort of God's presence in our lives, we, we try to combat that lie by shopping, by belonging to different things or organizations, and we, we pursue all these different things to try to find comfort, to combat this lie. But the good news of God's word that we're going to see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is that we already are gifted. Right? So if you're a note taker, if you like to write things down, this is the first point that I want you to hold onto is you, you already are special. You already are gifted. You already have value. You already matter to the world. Right? This is the whole point of God's word in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 4. St. Paul says, Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Now if you like to take notes, you highlight things in your Bible, verse 6 would be one to underline, circle, highlight. Because what it says is it is the same God at work in all of our lives with all the different gifts and activities that are going on in the church and the world. And he says, who empowers them all in everyone. That includes you, even on the days when you don't want to believe it, right? Now, here's one of the ways we kind of reject the truth of God's word and his promises. We fall into the temptation of believing the lie is we try to act like or we tell ourselves my gift doesn't matter as much as someone else's, right? I, I don't have as much to offer to the church, to God, to the world, to people as other people. Like th what they have is special. What I have is not. But the whole point, and as Paul is repeating himself in these ver verses, what he's saying, there's a variety of gifts, there's a variety of acts of service, but he's saying it's all the same God at work, empowering who? Everyone, right? So everyone is gifted. You are gifted by God. He has selected you and said, this is how I want you to be. This is how I made you and created. This is how I want to use you in my world to impact people's lives. So it's not just for a select few. It's not just for special people that we elevate and go, wow, look how wonderful and amazing they are. Paul is saying here is the baseline that God has gifted and empowered everyone. And in a variety of ways. Right? When we start doing this comparing and contrasting game, how many of you are good at that? Right? You compare and contrast yourself to other people, or you do it to make yourself feel better, or you do it and it makes you feel worse. Right? It's like the flip of a coin there. What happens is we end up discarding what God has done in our lives, the way he has shaped us and formed us and made us. So one of the common ways that I hear this from people in my years of pastoral ministry is, Pastor, I could never do what you do which is a, like sort of a nice compliment. I'm like, it's not that hard, okay? <laughs> you could do it. I believe in you, all right? But what people mean by that is also an insult to themselves, right? Like, I, I could never do what this person does. Now, on the one hand, it sounds really humble, right? Like, wow, that person is so gifted or so skilled in that area. I could never do that. But what are you doing at the same time? You're kind of putting your own self down, right? Because you're saying, well, what do I have? And this is why you and I have to be in God's word and listen to God's 
word, it says in verse six, it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. So Paul's view of the church, of you and me as followers of Jesus, that everybody is gifted and empowered by God. Here's the other good news, is that it's a gift from God, right? Because who who do all these gifts come from, according to Paul? They're, They're from God, right? He's the one empowering everybody. He's the one giving them to everybody. Now, here's why that matters so much, is that when we are tempted to believe the lies that maybe I don't have much to offer, or my gift is not as special or as significant, we have to remember, well, who gave it to you? Oh, thank you. It's right there in verse six. Say it again, it's from God, right? So what we do to combat the lies, we say, wait, 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 this isn't about me, right? This is about my God. He's the one who has empowered me and gifted me. He's the one who has decided, this is how I want you to be. And that's powerful good news. Because we can combat the lie saying, well, it's not that my gift isn't significant or that doesn't matter. It's just a different area of service, right? That's why Paul says there's a variety of gifts. There's a variety of activities. There's a variety of service opportunities. And so the whole point he's saying is, look, we're all empowered. We're all gifted. And it all comes from God. He didn't, he didn't make a mistake He didn't, like, ship you the wrong thing. You're like, well, now I've got to return it. Okay, I don't like it. No, he said, no, no, I I made you this way, right? One of the most famous lines in the book of Psalms is, I thank you, God, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How many women have heard that verse, right? And how many men have heard that verse? Yeah, a few of us, right? You know why? Because it's used at, like, every women's conference and retreat in the history of women's conferences, retreats. And it's beautiful and it's true. But it's also true for guys. Because you know who wrote it? King David, right? (laughs) This warrior king is like, I thank God because you fearfully and wonderfully made me. And here's why this matters. Paul's saying, the God who shaped you and made you and created you has now gifted you and empowered you. Meaning, he didn't mess up. Meaning, your gift has value. Your gifting matters. Your gifting is important. We don't compare and contrast ourselves to other people and go like, well, this person can do this and I can't. You know what you should do in those moments? Thank God, because you're different then. You go, oh, God's how God has gifted that person and this is how God has gifted me. This is my response every time someone comes up and tells me nice things. And they're like, Pastor, you're so good. I could never do that. And I go, thank God. You know how boring this church would be if all of us were trying to do what I'm doing right now? Like really astronomically boring and also probably annoying, right? Here's a good example from practical life outside of the pulpit. When my wife and I were serving at our first church in Maryland and people got to know us, someone who was a very good friend, so I, like it wasn't mean, just kind of said to me bluntly at a dinner party, and go, did you know that your wife is the nice one? I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's why I married her. I'll balance all of this out, okay? <laughs> you know why? Because she is the nice one, all right? <laughs> it's a whole other story, all right? Because God has gifted us all in different ways. We're, we're not all supposed to be the same. We're not all supposed to be like, we all have to have this one gift or we don't matter. Paul is actually saying God has intentionally designed you and the church to be this way, that there are a variety of gifts and activities and acts of service. So number one, you are gifted and that gifting comes from God. And here he goes on in verse 11 of chapter 12. He lists off a whole bunch of spiritual gifts, but here's a verse I want you to hold on to and listen to. He says, All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So there's like this wonderful list of all these spiritual gifts. 
And then Paul says this amazing thing. He says, no, it's the Holy Spirit. It is God himself deciding what, who gets one and who gets what. And he's doing it individually as he wills. So you are gifted because God has decided that's how he wants you to be. God wants you to serve him and love others as you and not as anybody else. He wants you to celebrate and use the way that he has gifted you, not the way that he has gifted somebody else. One of my favorite examples of this is at the Gospel of John. Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, I want you to feed my sheep. And Peter's amazing, humble response to this holy moment is to look at the Apostle John and go, and what about him? <laughs> right? Because I love how dumb Peter is, because we're just like him. Because I'm pleading with you to listen to the word of God. What does the word of God say? That the Holy Spirit has gifted each person, what? Individually, meaning you, not just them, but you. The Holy Spirit is at work in your life. He has gifted you. He has designed you and made you in a unique and special and powerful way. And all of you are going to walk out of here and go, yeah, well, what about him? And what about her? Because that's going to be the temptation, right? God is saying, look what I have done in your life. I have made you. I have formed you. I have gifted you with my Holy Spirit in a unique and powerful and special way. And we have a choice. We can either go, wow, thank you, Jesus, and use it to serve others. Or we can respond like Peter and be like, yeah, well, what about him? What about her? And my hope and prayer and plea with you is to say, oh, okay, thank you, Jesus. And then to go and use that gift, however he has called you to do that. Because he didn't make a mistake. He, he didn't mess up and say, oh, I gave you the wrong one. Well, good luck with it. <laughs> right? He, he, he didn't shortchange you. One of my favorite examples of this is my mother-in-law. I love my mother-in-law. She drives me crazy, but I love my mother-in-law. She doesn't listen to these. It's okay. <laughs> my wonderful mother-in-law has this amazing gift that I'll never have because I have a social anxiety disorder and I'm introverted, which means my wife is the nice one and I don't want to make friends, okay? <laughs> My mother-in-law is the exact opposite of this. She could become your best friend. Next time they're in town, I'll let you know. You could all stop by and make a new best buddy for the rest of your life. I, I, I can't do this. And she does it everywhere. Now, there are times where I go, wow, thank you, Jesus. This is amazing. And there's other times where I'm like, Emily, we, we really just need to check out. We, we just really, really need to leave the store right now because I'm losing my patience. But I remember this, this one moment, we were in St. Louis, and we're in this very fancy shopping area that I always get dragged to, all right? <laughs> and we're all there, and my mother-in-law is talking to the checkout lady and getting to know her and everything. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, cool, we're leaving. We're finally checking out. This is the last store. We've been to a lot of stores, y'all. I'm like, I was the last one. Thank you, Jesus. There is a God. We're leaving. And then the checkout proceeds to take over 30 minutes, which, look, my wife's the nice one, okay? I'm just standing, I'm at the door, just like, we could leave. It's right here. We could get out. <laughs> at the end of 30 minutes, the cashier is being prayed for by my mother-in-law because one of her relatives has cancer and it doesn't look good. Now, if it was me, I wouldn't even have known their name because I would have just been like, thank you. I don't even make eye contact. Just touch the card. We're leaving. And here's the deal. Paul says, God has empowered each one individually. So instead of going, oh, I got nothing to offer because I can't do this or I can't do that, we go, no, no, no. Thank God that God has gifted other people in these unique and beautiful ways to have those conversations. 
Th thank God, God has gifted and, and equipped certain people to be able to share God's word and to preach it and teach it. Thank God, God has equipped certain people to have a heart for the marginalized and the poor and the hurting, and they, they love to serve them. This whole point is to be celebrating the goodness of God at work in everybody's life, rather than tearing each other down or believing the lies and tearing ourselves down and saying, I got nothing to offer. Because Paul's saying, no, you have everything to offer. You have everything God intended you to have to give to the world. So here's the next point. You're actually prepared for this already. Right? People are like, Pastor, what are we going to do like a spiritual gifts inventory? Whenever you want, Google them. They exist. I'm not going to do them with you. Because I trust that the Holy Spirit has gifted you. You'll figure it out. Because he has gifted you, and he's called you, and he's prepared you. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says it this way. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So I want you to, to listen to this again. For we are his workmanship. So who has made you, informed you, and created you? We're so close. So Y'all get right. I'm going to read it again. Ephesians 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. So who made you, informed you? God. God. Okay. And Paul has said that he has what? He has gifted each one individually, correct? So God has created you. He has formed you. He has made you as his masterpiece. It's one of my favorite translations of this word, where it says we're his workmanship, right? So if you're a little more artistic, the way God, it can be translated is that you are his masterpiece. He's saying, look what I made. Anybody ever made something that you were really proud of and you wanted to show it off to people? <laughs> Some of you are like, no, I've never been proud of it. Okay, look, just be more proud of yourselves, okay? <laughs> but you do something, you accomplish something, you make something, what do you want to do? Show it to people. Like, look at this, isn't it amazing? That's God with you. You're his. That's not me just trying to butter you up. That's what God's word promises you. You are his workmanship. You, sitting there right now, with all your doubts and fears, are his masterpiece. He says, I've made you this way on purpose. I have gifted you this way on purpose. We are created in Christ Jesus, Paul goes on, for good works, which means we've been given this purpose to take the gift that he has given you and to love other people with it, to help other people, to serve them, to help them know that Jesus has made them and loves them as well. Now, this is the best part, though, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, here's the radical thing that Paul is saying is that God prepared all the good works beforehand. It's a nice way of Paul is saying before you even thought of them, before you came up with a plan or an idea. And he says, no, this is what I want for your life. And then Paul says, so that we could walk in them, meaning there's going to be endless opportunities for you and I, if we listen to the voice of Jesus, to use the gifts that he's given to us to serve others. It's not hard. It's not, it's not like God's keeping it a secret from you, right? And if you're like, I, I, I don't know, well, read God's word and ask him to show you. Ask him, what, what is you, you, my gifting? How have you made me? What do you want me to do? And then ask him, help me walk in the good works you've prepared beforehand for me. They're already there, right? That conversation my mother-in-law had with that cashier was not an accident because God has prepared those good works beforehand. So God has gifted you and God has prepared you to serve him with your gifts. And he's gonna give you opportunities. Some of them are gonna be really big, like, like people are gonna notice and be like, oh my gosh, wow, wasn't that amazing? And there's gonna be other times, almost nobody's gonna know. 
Is that true or false in your life experience? Right? Sometimes we're like, so many, thank you so much, look at the impact. And there's going to be other times where you're never going to have any idea what the impact is. Today we're celebrating LWML Sunday. We're recognizing this wonderful organization that serves locally and globally. They do so much to bring the good news of Jesus around the world. So we want to say thank you to them. We have our elderly ladies have been helping and lead our worship this morning. But when I was a little kid, my brother and I were not well behaved in church. And this is shocking. We both ended up being pastors. You do with that what you want, okay? All right. But I remember when my mom was a single mom, she wanted to get involved in the church. She wanted to serve. I think she was also trying to keep my brother and I attached to it. Okay, <laughs> it's like, here we go, Lord, you could do something with these guys. All right. And so I remember she eventually, as she was studying to be an accountant, became the treasurer for LWML. Because she can't sing. That's where I got that gift from. Okay, thanks, Mom. She can't sing at all. I love my mom, but it's bad. If you want to know what it sounds like, you can listen to me sing. It's the same. All right. She doesn't like to be in front of people. She's shy. She's got anxiety, right? But she was like, how can I serve? Well, she's really good at math and Excel spreadsheets. Like, really good at it. Now, on the one hand, you could look at it and think, well, I don't have much to offer the Lord, right? I don't have much to offer the church. But God has said, oh, no, I've made you and created you and designed you in a certain way. And God's word says, I've prepared ways for you to serve. So she began serving with the elderly as their treasurer. And I remember this because I had to go to all the meetings because we couldn't afford a babysitter. So my brother and I, the meetings were in this room right next to the gym. And my mom and I would just be going, boys, it's going to be like an hour long. Just you know, be nice to each other and pray and behave. And we're like, yes, mom, we will always do this for you, Right. And we were, because we're going to be pastors, so we were like, oh, no problem at all. And she would go into that room with all those wonderful LWL ladies. And inside the gym, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and screaming and shouting. They're like, how, is there like a tournament going on? And my mom was like, no, it's just my two sons. Okay. <laughs> now, bless all those LWL ladies. They welcomed my single mom. Right, and they loved her and allowed, gave her an opportunity to serve the Lord, use her gifts. And they let my brother and I go crazy in that gymnasium and make all kinds of hellish noise and screams and shouts and everything going on. And they never came out yelling at us, like, What are you doing? Right, they just were like, Yeah, okay, that's what's going to happen. But for my mom, it became this wonderful opportunity to be connected to the community of God and to the church. And on the surface level, it's like, Wow, that looks like a really small thing, right? But according to God's way of thinking, God's words of promise, there, there is no small gift. There's no insignificant act of service. This is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians, so yeah, there's a variety of gifts, there's a variety of service, there's a variety of activities. He says, but it's all the same Lord, it's all the same spirit, it's all the same God giving these gifts to every single person. So God has gifted you. He has prepared you to use that gift to love and serve others. And here's our response. You and I are called by God to not be lazy, to put it real bluntly, to, to not waste what he has given to you. There's different ways we could waste it. We could waste it by not doing anything. Right? Just saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to serve. I'm not going to give. We, we could waste it by believing the lies of Satan and the lies that we tell ourselves, which is it's not good enough. It's not special. It's not going to make a difference. What, well, how does it matter? But here's how you and I o obey and respond to the calling that God has put on every single body's life. It drives me insane that in our tradition, we label people like me as called workers, right? Because we got a thing called a divine call. That's so annoying to me. <laughs> I can't change it. No one's listening to me. But, you know, maybe one day. 
You know why? Because in the Bible, guess who's called by God? All y'all, right? Yeah, that way you'll remember it with my Texan. All y'all are called. Right? I had a mentor tell me this, and then I stole it from him, and I started using it on all the people in my ministry, which is when people come up to me and say, Pastor, I'm thinking about going into ministry. I told him that because I was actually like thinking about like going to seminary. And he goes, well, Mark, are you a Christian? I was like, yeah, you've known me like almost my whole life. Like, yeah, I'm a Christian. Is this, this is a trick question? And he goes, no. I'm just like, are you a Christian? I said, yeah, I'm a Christian. He goes, well, it's too late. You're already in ministry. And he's right. So anytime any of you come up to me like, I want to mess with you, then we'll have a real conversation, right? <laughs> I'm thinking about going into ministry. But do you believe in Jesus? Do you have the Holy Spirit? It's too late. You're already in. You're already called. He's already got a plan and a purpose for you. The question is, do I respond in obedience? Do I respond in thanksgiving? Go, oh, thank you, Lord, for gifting me the way you have. And now I'm going to go serve you by using my gift to love and serve. On page 292 in our hymnal, that we have this thing called private confession and absolution or individual confession and absolution. You could look it up sometime. But one of my favorite lines in this individual confession is this. It says, I have not let his, that means God's, love have its way with me. I have not let his love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. So this... The, the, the big secret to serving God and loving others and using the variety of gifts that he has given to you is not trying harder. It's not a spiritual gifts inventory. You know, I'm going to figure out which ones I got. It's actually believing that Jesus loves you, that he is your shepherd, that he has called you to be his own, and he's never letting go of you. And letting his love completely transform your life and the way you see yourself, the way you see others, and the way you see the world. This is what the Apostle Peter, first Peter, or chapter four, verse 10 says, he says, as each has received a gift. And by the way, we know that, guess what? How many of y'all have received a gift? All y'all, right? So as each has received a gift, meaning you, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. So when you let the grace of Jesus into your life, it completely changes you, changes the way you see yourself, changes the way you think and talk to yourself. It also changes the way you see others. And so the, the secret to how do I make a difference and how do I use this gift that God has given to me is what Paul and Peter say, which is, hey, he's given you grace. Trust that grace, believe in that grace, rest in that grace and go, okay, now I'm gonna share it with others by using the abilities and the talents and the skills that God has given me to do it. Remembering the whole time, he's, he's never letting go of you, even when you mess up. And remembering the whole time, now he's already prepared all of these opportunities for me. And remembering, most importantly of all, that no gift is a mistake or an accident. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you have called each and every one of us by your word of grace. We thank and praise you that you have gifted each and every single one of us the way that you have chosen on purpose. Lord, may we continue to listen to your voice and your word that reminds us that you love us, you have redeemed us, you're holding on to us, that you have gifted us so that we may serve others, so that they may worship and praise you. Pray this in your holy name. Amen.